with Emmy Delfin from the DICT. Hi, Emmy. Hi, Claire. How are you? I'm good. So thanks for talking to us this morning. We're here at the Philippine Blockchain Week press conference. And earlier, you did mention that the DICT has several blockchain initiatives. Can you tell us more about them? First of all, I'd like to introduce uh, one of the mandates of the ICT is to uh, ensure the growth and development of the ICT industry, including, of course, emerging technology and blockchain, uh, to make sure that we have jobs for Filipinos. So having said that, we are implementing a program called SETPH, stimulating the growth of emerging technologies in the Philippines. So that's where all our different initiatives for blockchain are being implemented. So we've been doing a lot of advocacy in terms of informing the public, the Filipinos, about the opportunities in blockchain, both online and face-to-face, -face, bringing those opportunities to the countryside. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think blockchain technology is shaping up in the country? I mean, you've been very active. I've seen you in most of the blockchain events speaking. What is your observation so far in terms of enterprises and government mm -hmm. adopting blockchain? Well, in terms of enterprises, I think we're, we're getting there. But in terms of government, I think there's still a lot of advocacy, uh, information campaign, because I think they have to embrace first and really understand what are the opportunities in blockchain for them to be able to do uh, different uh, services to the public using blockchain technology. You know, there was a mandate by President Bongbong Marcos when he was inaugurated as president. He did say that he wants the government to streamline their services and use these advanced technologies. What is the DICT doing to uh, make this mandate happen? Okay, so recently, uh, because we actually celebrated June as our National ICT Month, we have a separate group, uh, e-government group. So we launched the eGov Super App. So basically, it's consolidating the different services of government into just one application. So that EGOV Super App can be downloaded both uh, in iOS and Android. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are already uh, users using that, uh, and we're hoping that other services from the different government agencies should also be consolidated in that one EGOV Super App. Great. Okay, so we will definitely be following this story yes. um, and keep us updated. Emmy, you're a good friend of CoinGeek and all of us here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. I'm here with Joe Dan Darong from the DTI. Hi. Hi, hello. Hello, my dear. Um, so tell me what the DTI is doing to further enhance uh, the blockchain adoption in the Philippines. Okay, we start with DTI's mandate to empower consumers and enable businesses. Um, as of the moment, with the current administration, we have this what we call science, technology, innovation-based industrialization strategy. So we do have priority sectors like the health sector, manufacturing, and all basic necessity sector. And the recent addition to that priority sector is the creative industry. So in terms of adoption of blockchain, we can actually reposition that question into the creative industry, where the adoption is more likely, visible, and easy. To, or to, to propose or move as an agenda. So for example, we're particularly interested with the visual arts design, and that is actually where the blockchain uh, community will come in. There are a number of paintings and visual arts that are coming into the space of digitalization and some digitalized asset. So DTI is really pushing the agenda in general, digital transformation, innovation. And blockchain is just one of those mechanisms that we see uh, the, the, the value of these technological breakthroughs. So just to answer that question quickly, we are now looking at blockchain as a way for our creative sector to be at par with our creative world out there because the creative economy in the world has been using blockchain for quite some time. There are a lot of um, like paintings and sketches that are transformed to non-fungible tokens that are actual, actually being, uh, being supported by the blockchain community. Are there any specific initiatives that the DTI is doing um, to, to push blockchain uh, technology and um, for, for people to be able to learn about it and, and to use it for their benefit? Well, to be honest with you, 
uh, while the entire Philippines is understanding and learning blockchain, the DTI is also doing the same. So we don't have a specific initiative yet, but at least in the discussion, in the policy making, we are uh, bringing the blockchain flavor already. So we have to educate the government in terms of the potentials and prospects of blockchain because it has already been considered as something disruptive. Uh, but we are looking in my, in my work in the Competitiveness and Innovation Group, we really wanted to push that agenda in the creative industry among all the priority industries that we have. So stay tuned. Uh, hopefully the next time that we'll see each other, I will be able to provide you name the program that actually specifically targeting blockchain. Um, Department of Trade and Industry, so trade and industry. Um, do you think uh, blockchain can benefit um, enterprises in the Philippines? How do you think blockchain can benefit Filipino businesses? Okay, um, as, as an economist, I always believe on the problem of information asymmetry. When the other parties are more knowledgeable in terms of information. And I think in blockchain, it gives that a promise of traceability, um, making sure that authenticity test is being carried out. And I think the potential of blockchain will provide that kind of trusted community ecosystem wherein businesses can transact without the fear, without the risk and uncertainty that the other party will not be able to fulfill its obligation. And I think I've seen personally that blockchain has provided that another option for people to de-risk themselves and to actually put forward in, um, give more emphasis on how to do business rather than asking themselves whether the person is trusted or not, whether transaction is protected, whether transaction is sustainable, whether uh, transactions are actually maintained and honored by those parties involved. So I think um, um, one thing that I could actually say is that blockchain is the future, right? And, and everybody may have not embraced it for now, but there are a lot of technologies that has been happening that we used to fear years back. So I hope that everybody will be able to give blockchain a chance and we'll see from there. Love that. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us. Oh, it's my pleasure and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts, not just the DTI. Although in DTI, we always have this notion that we would like to educate people about blockchain, but we're being educated by blockchain community right now. And so we're happy that we continue to learn and learn and relearn blockchain in the process. Because at the end of the day, it's actually how we're able to enable our being businesses and enable our being a consumer. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thank you very much. Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, blockchain, stablecoins, Metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Blockchain 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain.